Well, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on our time zone. I'm Pascual from Campinas State University in Brazil and co-chair of the SCAS 2020 conference. As you know, SCAS 2020 was postponed to the COVID-19 pandemic, and the SCAS webinar series is organized to keep our community connected and live during the absence of the SCAS in-person conference. The new dates for the SCAS 2020 now into 2021 are September 27 to October 2nd, 2021. The conference will be fully online. The abstract submission registrations are open, so please check the conference website to submit your abstract to register and check the updates. So now I would like to welcome all of you to today's SCAS webinar. Thank you very much for joining us for this event. And I hope you and your family are well and healthy during this difficult time. During the presentation, please keep your microphones muted and your videos off, but you are welcome to start your videos and you mute your microphones to ask questions. So to introduce our speaker for today, I would like to invite Dr. Joe Thompson from Los Alamos National Laboratory. Joe Thompson is a very well-known member of this community and a member of the SCAS 2020 International Advisory Committee. Joe, thank you very much for being with us today. And please, you may begin the introduction. Okay, thanks, Pascual. So it's, it's a pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Professor Hilbert von Lohneisen. I think probably everyone here knows, knows Hilbert, but just by way of a brief introduction, uh, he received his uh, doctoral degree from uh, University of Cologne, which was followed then by a postdoc at the CNRS in Grenoble and uh, a habilitation in Aachen. Uh, for virtually all of his career, he's been a professor at the University of uh, Karlsruhe and simultaneously head of the Institute for Solid State Physics at the Institute for uh, the Karlsruhe Institute uh, of Technology. So I think the names of the institutes have sort of merged over the last few years, but this is more or less the, the gist. <clears throat> so uh, within this guest community, uh, Hilbert probably is most well known for his pioneering studies of quantum phase transitions and quantum criticality, especially in the gold dope cerium copper six uh, system. And at least to my knowledge, this work was the first to point out uh, the inadequacies, uh, inadequacies of the standard Hertz-Millis Maria model for describing a criticality in a heavy fermion metal. And this led Hilbert and co-workers to propose this concept of a local type of criticality uh, in which you expect uh, energy over uh, temperature scaling which in fact he and co-workers subsequently found in, in gold dope uh, serum copper six. So his, his work on quantum phase transitions is just one of his many contributions that have changed the direction of research in this guest community. But what you may not know about him is that he's also made a comparably impactful contributions to a number of other fields, including the study of metal insulator transitions, uh, spintronics, nanostructure materials, graphene, uh, just, to name, just to name a few. And uh, because of these numerous contributions, he's been recognized with the uh, Heinz Meyer Leibniz uh, Prize, the Hector Science Prize, and membership in the Heidelberg Academy of Sciences, Science, the German Academy of Science and Engineering, and the Hector Fellow Academy, again, just to, just to mention a few. So, Hilbert, we're, we're looking forward to your talk this morning on multidimensional, multidimensional entropy landscape uh, in quantum criticality. Uh, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Joe. And thank you very much, Paul, Paul for uh, inviting me uh, to uh, give this uh, seminar, which I'm actually looking forward very much to. And actually also for, uh, you know, providing the forum of meeting and, and uh, inter interchanging. I think that's very, very important. Okay, so I will talk about multi-dimensional uh, entropy uh, 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 landscape in quantum criticality. And I will first uh, talk a little bit about quantum phase transitions and then focus on serum copper gold, 
which, uh, as Joe mentioned, is actually a canonical quantum critical heavy fermion metal. I will uh, talk about probing anisotropies for via thermal expansion to reveal the en en entropy uh, landscape. I will talk about the effect of structural uh, uh, transitions that are actually close to uh, to the magnetic uh, quantum critical uh, point. Uh, and then uh, finally, I will talk about uh, a little bit about uh, time resolved terahertz spectroscopy that is work done in con conjunction with uh, um, <clears throat> uh, Hans Koha and also Manfred Fiebig from the ETH in Zurich. And then I switch gears and talk about uh, geometrically frustrated antiferromagnetic cerium palladium aluminum, which also is a heavy fermium metal. And I'll talk about how one actually approaches quantum criticality by substituting palladium by a little bit of nic uh, nickel. And then finally, I will again return to the entropy and the entropy, talk about the entropy evolution in the magnetic uh, phases, uh, phases of serum uh, palladium aluminum. Actually, when one talks about uh, quantum phase uh, uh, transitions, one actually goes back to the uh, theory of uh, Ginzburg and Landau and modification modif modified by uh, the renormalization groups uh, by Wilson. And the, the main point is that the critical properties uh, are universal. They depend on spatial dimension of the system and symmetry of the order parameter. Um, and that is because the correlation length diverges as one approaches the critical temperature with an exponent nu. Associated, oops, um, associated with this uh, uh, change in the correlation length is a divergence of, of the correlation time. And they are coupled correlation length and coupled uh, and correlation time are actually um, governed by this uh, uh, critical exponent z. Now, uh, Hertz actually asked the question, what happens if you can, can actually drive the system by some external parameter like pressure, con composition and so forth, all the way down to zero temperature? There are, of course, no, if it's, it, it's, it's strictly at equal zero, there are no uh, thermal fluctuations around. Um, and <clears throat> so what, what actually happens to the system? Uh, of course, we know there, there are quantum uh, fluctuations um, but the, the issue is, when are they important and, and, and what, what temperature range? And actually, they are th then important when their energy, their, their, their quantum energy, h bar over tau, uh, is larger than temperature. So as you go, uh, go to lower and lower temperatures, all the way to uh, this temperature zero, the system grows in the time direction. And thereby, the dimension, dimensionality of the system actually increases from the Euclidean dimension d to d plus z, where z is just this uh, exponent uh, between uh, the cor correlation time and correlation length. The problem, however, in, in this system is, in, in, in metallic systems, is they're, they're um, actually not only the um, magnetic uh, uh, bosonic degrees of freedom that are associated with the uh, magnetic uh, 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 magnetic transition, but also you have you have low lying excitations, namely the fermions, and that is actually the heart of the the problem to treat the fermions. And there's a lot of work uh, has been done that goes beyond uh, the Hertz work uh, to actually treat treat with that. <clears throat> now. Going to temperature equal zero, uh, of course, uh, we know that in a, in a uh, completely ordered system, um, the entropy has to go to zero. Um, however, it's interesting to actually uh, realize that uh, at finer temperatures, the entropy can be rather large. In fact, uh, as I shown illustrated here, um, the entropy can actually go, go has to go to zero at t equals zero, but it can do so with a vert vert vertical tangent. So, so that's really there's a lot of extra entropy compared to a Fermi liquid where the entropy is linear in temperature, and and that is perhaps one of the reasons why the quantum quantum phase transitions are important because uh, there's a lot of entropy that is this. Uh, 
uh, different ways, uh, uh, the system seeks different ways to get out of this excess entropy. Now, to get a, 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 a transition temperature at very low temperatures or even zero, one has to have competing interactions. And two examples are shown here. One is the uh, famous Conlow versus RKKY interaction, where you have the interplay between on-site inter uh, on, on interactions, the Conlow effect, and inter-site interaction. And this Donia phase diagram is actually shown here. That is, if for low, for low, uh, <clears throat> for low, uh, both both uh, actually are governed by the same J. That is the the coupling between the conduction electrons and the local magnetic moments. In our case, it it'll be four F uh, moments. And uh, <clears throat> as one increases uh, this 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 coupling or the exchange interaction, the uh, condo temperature grows rather slowly. And the rural material goes faster, but then because of the exponential growth of the uh, corner temperature, then finally it takes over and this vanish vanishes again. And this gives rise to a, a, uh, um, an instability of and a, a possible corner critical point at this region. Another scen scenario to actually have competing interactions is one has no corner effect, but rather one has a nearest neighbor or next nearest neighbor interactions in an insulating magnet. Uh, and there, there, for instance, by uh, geometric uh, frustration of nearest neighbor interactions, like in this, in, in this triangular uh, lattice, or by competing nearest neighbor and next nearest interactions, in, for instance, in a rectangular lattice, one can actually also have the situation where a quantum phase transition occurs at, uh, at, at uh, very low or at, at uh, zero temperature. Now, <clears throat> to map those two um, um, types together, uh, Jimmy LC and others also in, uh, sort of uh, propose the notion of a global phase diagram. That is, in, in, in addition to having this, this axis for the coupling between Conlo and, uh, and Rural Mankitel interaction. Uh, one actually also proposed, he, they, he also proposed that one has, has a, um, a, a quantity D that actually is responsible for, um, uh, some, for instance, um, geometric frustration uh, or generally more general for, for an increase in fluctuations. Clearly, if the fluctuations become too strong, that is if G incre increases uh, too strongly, then uh, of course the anti-ferromagnetic or magnetic order will be, will, be lost, will be lost. And this has been, this concept has been worked out by uh, different the theoretical uh, versions. And one is for instance by Sentiu and Matthias Voita and Subi Sajdev. And the other is by, by uh, Piers Kome, uh, Nevidomsky. But the essence is also the same one has the, the condo scale in this range, or condo and RKUY interaction uh, in this scale, and then the uh, uh, frustration scale in this uh, scale. The problem for uh, as exper experimentalists, at least, is that um, <clears throat> there is no really quantitative working definition of frustration, uh, and that remains a challenge. And also, um, the role of the uh, tuning parameter, for instance, magnetic field, is not clear. It's sometimes you find di diagrams where the magnetic field is uh, associated to go along that direction. In other papers, it is along that direction. So there is some sort of um, uh, un un uncertainty how to actually associate uh, these parameters, JK and and and. Uh, uh, Rural Mankitel interaction on the one side, and this parameter G, the frustration parameter, on the other side, with the um, um, experimental probe, probe of uh, uh, quantum criticality. Now I come to serum copper gold, um, which is, as Joe mentioned, a quantum critical, uh, a canonical quantum critical heavy fermion metal. And uh, just to remind you, um, if CM copper six is a non-magnetic uh, uh, heavy, uh, heavy fermion system, but has short-lived correlations. And as you alloy with gold, then you actually have 
the system develops a long range um, anti ferromagnetic order for this concentration of point 0.1 of x x point 0.1 one has an onset of anti ferromagnetic order and the, the idea is of course that lattice a negative lattice pressure explains why the bigger bigger gold actually then favors the uh, magnetic order by actually um, <clears throat> favoring the uh, ruhlmann kitter interaction over the Conlon interaction. This is a, a picture of the specific heat, sp specific heat divided by temperature over the logarithm of temperature uh, coming from high temperatures. That is, these, these are the magnetically ordered uh, um, uh, concentrations uh, for uh, concentrations, uh, z uh, gold concentration zero, one has this uh, leveling off towards a thermal liquid, as one would expe expect for and what has been seen also in serum copper six prior. And then for this critical, uh, this critical concentration x equals 0.1, one sees this straight line in this plot, that is the C over T varies as the logarithm of temperature. And that was one actually of the first pu puzzles in the system because a logarithmic uh, uh, dependence of the specific he heat coefficient on temperature is not expected for an antiferromagnet, rather for a ferromagnet. And the, the resistivity is linear in temperature over a, a certain range of uh, factor of 10 in temperature. Uh, and then, um, but the, the, the main uh, sort of unusual features are, have actually come from uh, Newton scattering experiments that were uh, alluded to by by Joe. So, uh, in in the in the um, Q dependence, one sees an anomalous uh, uh, um, uh, behavior of the fluctuations. They are they do not develop as a tropically around the quantum, quantum critical point, but rather they they have this wing like structure that is actually almost linear in or that is one dimensional and this tr translates then in k space to uh, it is it is linear so it's, it's translates then to a two dimensional fluctuation uh, fl fluctuations in real space even more surprising was the observation by Alma Schroeder and collaborators that uh, there is a scaling of the frequency which is anomalous, which is not in, in, in conjunction with the Hertz-Miller's Hertz uh, theory. And this scaling is really seen here. Um, oops. This scaling is seen here uh, in, in this plot of, uh, of the uh, scaling function with a certain temperature dependence, a certain temperature um, um, pro 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 product. Uh, plotted as, um, in this case, energy over kT. And this is then the scaling plot. And the same is actually obtained if you, if, if you replace the, um, the uh, Zeeman energy by, by a biomagnetic field, you get the same side type of uh, plot. Now the thermal expansion is a, a very useful uh, tool uh, to actually look at the um, uh, quantum criticality, because first of all, it's of course a thermodynamic probe, but then it, it offers the possibility to actually um, uh, go into different directions to measure the thermal expansion coefficient in long different directions. And if you then just look at the at the uh, um, Maxwell uh, relations for the uh, for the uh, <coughs> for the for the um, of, of, of Gibbs free energy, then uh, one sees that one can actually really just uh, um, plot uh, the uh, thermal expansion coefficient as a as a double differentiate versus pressure and uh, and 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 temperature, and one defines then the Green Eisen ratio uh, as uh, as the uh, Grun Eisen ratio as the ratio of the thermal expansion coefficient divided by the specific heat. Now, if one looks then at a thermal liquid, we know that the C over T is constant. It's also, of course, dS over dT. And, and if you look then at the, so the entropy is given by gamma of T. And then if you plot then alpha, that is the thermal expansion coefficient divided by T, um, you find that it, this is always constant. So that the Grunheisen ratio 
is, con is also uh, con likewise constant. However, if you come close to a quantum critical point, one has actually this piling up of the entropy uh, right at the quantum at the uh, quantum critical point, uh, which in this case is, is uh, shown to actually occur at a critical uh, uh, stress uh, here. And um, one can actually visualize or in, 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 um, understand this, this uh, strong uh, uh, entropy in, in case, because if one has a low temperature phase transition, then it means that, or it is, uh, implies that one or more energy scales go to zero. If you just think of one energy scale, E star, then uh, the, um, <clears throat> The uh, uh, Gruneisen parameter, which is, uh, as I mentioned, just alpha over C, uh, then is given by E star over um, uh, D, D E over D sigma divided by E, and this then diverges as one uh, goes uh, to the to T with zero. So this has been seen, uh, for instance, in, in uh, by Sebastian Saum in his thesis in CM copper gold, again, these are the same or similar concentrations as I showed before for the specific heat. And one, here, one has this strong increase for, uh, for uh, the critical concentration, x equals 0.1. And for uh, concentrations above uh, this concentration, one he has these strong, very strong changes of the entropy, uh, I'm sorry, of the thermal expansion coefficient, uh, which is much stronger actually than the uh, a change of the specific heat. To compare that, we can just look at the different quantities we have measured, like the magnetic susceptibility. We, has a, we have a nice maximum here of the susceptibility for a concentration of point, x equals 0 0.15. Uh, yeah, 0.15. And, but the specific heat, which overall shows this logarithmic behavior, shown as, a, as, a, as, a, as this solid line, um, is actually only weakly shows a very weak uh, structure here at this uh, transition temperature of 80 millikelvin. While at the same time, the uh, thermal expansion coefficients, apart from, you know, showing this very peculiar difference in the different directions, it's actually very strong in, in all these three directions. And that shows that the thermal expansion is really a very important tool to probe uh, quantum criticality. Now, of course, you can also measure different different uh, temperatures, and you see the different behaviors of the of, of the of the different uh, directions, uh, crystal field excitations. This is a structural transition. I'll come to that later on, and. Um, then we will, however, yet now focus on this low temperature range where uh, we approach quantum criticality. And that now is shown here. Here is the, the different thermal expansion coefficients for the three different directions, A, B, and C. And if one then just adds those up and to uh, produce the volume or bulk uh, thermal expansion coefficient uh, divided by temperature, uh, this is shown here. And one sees that this coefficient actually uh, increases or di diverges um, this logarithmic scale. So this is not zero, but this is uh, of, of maybe 50 millikelvin or so. So, um, and it does so more strongly than um, uh, than the specific heat, which I show, which, which as I showed for the quantum critical concentration, uh, d diverges just as the log of t of uh, temperature. So that shows, if you just look at the, 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 the figures, that the, the thermal expansion coefficient, which is just alpha V, I'm sorry, the, the Gruneisen ratio, which is just alpha, alpha, v, alpha v over C, uh, will, will diverge because this uh, quantity, the thermal expansion, diverges more strongly than the uh, specific heat. This is just uh, showing the same 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 uh, data, or now converted to uh, a gamma, that is uh, Gruneisen uh, ratios for the three different directions. One uh, important 
uh, aspect is actually to di differentiate between the different uh, pressure effects, in particular to differentiate between hy hydrostatic pressure and anisotropic pressures. Oops, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> so we can, of course, then if you have an orthorhombic uh, system, we don't have to uh, go to tensorial no notations. We can just uh, use Cartesian co coordinates for the three components of, say, of the entropy dependence on uh, different uh, stress uh, uh, directions. Um, <clears throat> So in this in this orthorhombic system or higher symmetric system, the uh, hydrostatic pressure is just written as p uh, times the body diagonal. That's indicated in this in this picture here. That's this this uh, this arrow here. You can then ask what is then the uh, a, a a pressure that is perpendicular to this hydrostatic pressure, and this is called pure shear stress, and it's it is defined as sigma L minus sigma M, where sigma L, you, you squeeze the system in one direction and you expand it in the other direction. That's the, this minus sign here. And this is a, a different type of stress than this uh, pure, the sim, so-called simple stress. And it this uh, pure shear stress picks up the anisotropy, for it because when um, and you have an isotropic system, you would have then uh, sigma LM would be uh, zero. And this shows just uh, an illustration uh, that uh, for the three different um, pure shear stresses, uh, the, the um, different uh, rate um, quantities we have then uh, results we have obtained. And then you actually, when you then also look at the um, uh, Gruneisen uh, ratios or difference in, in the Gruneisen ratios, one sees again this this more linear that is logarithmic because this is a logarithmic scale uh, linear dependence here, and but then you see for for one uh, uh, pure shear stress, namely uh, sigma c minus sigma b, you actually see that th nothing much happens. So you could actually be be mistaken and say. This is uh, this is uh, perhaps uh, a Fermi liquid-like behavior, um, but it simply tells you that you just don't move uh, the entropy in, in that region. You you are moving on a on a constant entropy uh, surface. So when when we just take the data and then plot what we have, the, the, uh, then we the, the, with um, all the components we have, then we see that the the maximum um, change in uh, the uh, the entropy with respect to the str uh, stre uh, stresses is not uh, the um, hydrostatic pressure, but there's also an additional contrib contribution contribution, namely C minus B. That is this one here that actually play plays uh, also an important role. <coughs> and you can actually then uh, sort of. Um, just put 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 this in the same diagram to actually look at the different uh, stress uh, stresses that are that are important, and what one sees is that this CB com component is actually the one that actually adds up to uh, to produce the change of the entropy, which is larger th uh, than the change um, co caused by um, hydrostatic pressure. But you can also see that the, the sigma uh, CB is actually this one here. And, and one sees now that this is, uh, one, one sees now that this, is, oops, I'm sorry. This sigma, uh, <clears throat> uh, sigma um, uh, CB, is actually almost perpendicular to the strain, uh, to the entropy change. That is, it is within this plane that is perpendicular to the entropy, sorry. This is, perp uh, this, uh, is perpendicular to the entropy change. That is, if you 
apply this, stra uh, this uh, stress component, this pure shear stress, you don't change anything, you don't change the entropy, and uh, it, it means uh, that it is not still not a Fermi liquid, but it's just stuck there uh, with, a, with, with, a, uh, with a given entropy. I'll come back to this point later. Now, uh, an interesting question then is, uh, we had this anomalous behavior of the inelastic fluctuations um, measured by uh, Oliver Stockard by, with Newton scattering. And the question is, can we relate this an anisotropy to the anisotropy we have found in the um, approach to the uh, quantum critical point? And this uh, st uh, pure shear stress CA that is actually important for uh, the fact that the entropy change is bigger than with uh, hydrostatic pressure. Uh, this uh, pure shear stress component actually, when one looks at this uh, type of diagram, and then this is the, uh, the the total diagram that we obtained in the Newton scattering. These are the data, and this is now in, in this was of course real uh, reciprocal space, and this then translates to in real space to these. Um, interconnected planes and what this pure shear stress actually does is it tilts these um, um, these planes against each other. So it would be actually interesting to be able to do uh, calculations where one can then actually um, uh, find out how the, the, the tilting of, uh, of these uh, planes against each other would affect uh, the quantum criticality. Now there was uh, <clears throat> some, some discussion some time ago about uh, a quantum critical, multi-critical point in CM copper gold. Um, I briefly mentioned that one has a monoclinic uh, distortion in the system and this, uh, this monoclinic uh, distortion uh, uh, so defined by this order parameter is actually shown here and one sees that this monoclinic distortion actually vanishes um, as one uh, changes the concentration and uh, when one gets close to the quantum critical point uh, it comes actually close to the um, <clears throat> to the to, to the vanishing of the magnetic order. Thereby the question was uh, do these have anything to do? In, a, in the next slide I show you, uh, apart from the original data, I show you now the combined phase diagram for the magnetic ordering. Uh, that's uh, the green uh, line here. Or, um, and this, this uh, terminates at a, for this particular concentration, terminates at a, con at, at a, a temperature of say point, point 0.7 or K or so. The monoclinic uh, distortion is Way, way more um, sensitive to, to to temperature. So it it is it has two hundred thirty um, copper six, and then then it goes. Oops. And then it goes. It, oh, sorry for that. And then goes all the way down to zero. And actually, this this is a mess here. It's not so easy to distinguish this. Although one has to bear bear in mind that this scale is a factor of two hundred uh, compressed co compared to this uh, um, near temperature scale. Um, but we we know that in in this case you can actually use pressure to suppress the magnetic ordering, but you can also suppress the, uh, the monoclinic distortion. And that means you can actually separate those two transitions. And that is shown in the next slide. This is here now in a three-dimensional diagram. This is again, pre this is what this, this line here is the one I showed before uh, for zero pressure. And now we have here the different hydrostatic pressures. And one sees these are the curves that actually then decrease uh, the near temperature. I showed you an example in, the, in one of the first slides. And here for two different concentrations. And here are not so many points. We just have a few points here. But it's clear that as one increases the pressure, 
so 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 if we go for instance to, to um <clears throat> 0.5 uh, gigapascal, uh, then, then of course uh, the the um, uh, transition here, the uh, magnetic transition and the monoclinic transition are uh, very far away, very 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 strongly uh, separate from each other. So that actually shows that um, these uh, two transitions have nothing to do with each other. What is even more surprising is that um, if one looks at the specific heat C over T um, of crystals that are tuned to uh, the uh, critical magnetic, uh, critical, uh, uh, to the magnetic uh, quantum critical point, uh, for instance, look at this point here at point, point three, or this one here at point two. These are the these are the two these are for each for x equals point one point two and point three at the appropriate pressure where they actually um, have a quantum critical point and it's really surprising that uh, we have a remarkable universality of the quantum critical um, specific heat um, and in particular, it's independent of, of uh, disorder because, of course, in these three different systems, the disorder will be, will be uh, very differently different. Now, I'll come briefly <clears throat> to uh, the time resolved uh, terrorist um, This is actually, um, you shoot a, 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 pulse, a terahertz pulse uh, on, on a sample. And you wait for the system, and uh, and you, you wait for for a, a reply. And that is, these are the pulses uh, uh, that are gen uh, actually are the resp immediate responses of the of the sample. And then after about eight, six to, to seven uh, um, uh, nanoseconds, uh, there comes there comes this answer, and um, one one actually sees uh, that this is uh, most strong at. Uh, at uh, around 30 Kelvin, it decays at lower temperatures and it goes to uh, zero at, at, at room temperature. And that is for pure serum copper six. And then for, for the quantum critical concentration, it really vanishes also for to, to low temperatures. And uh, in for, for the uh, magnetically ordered system, that's uh, serum copper five code one. So one, one sees not much of a response. So what does it tell us? If we then uh, plot, uh, if, if we associate this response I showed you um, with um, after a time of about um, six milliseconds, six nanoseconds, if the one associates that's this with, um, with the Conroy effect, one should uh, actually see that the Conroy effect as shown here is practiced uh, independent of temperature. That's actually the area of this, this, this response. If you then plot um, <clears throat> the weight of the, the feature, we, see, we had seen it at 300 Kelvin, it's almost, almost zero, then it rises strongly up to about eight, uh, uh, 30 millikelvin, and then it dec decreases strongly for the um, pure serum copper six, and even strong, more strongly, almost going to zero for the quantum critical system. And the question is, um, <clears throat> so the, the, the condo temperature as such uh, remains more or less the same, but the weight, uh, the, uh, the, the, um, the weight of the, of the uh, intensity varies. And I think that's, uh, that's an interesting aspect that might be uh, taken into account uh, by uh, talking about uh, Condo breakdown. With that, I will leave cm copper six and uh, come to cm palladium aluminum, which is, uh, a, as I mentioned, a partially frustrated heavy ferment system. And uh, this is the, the structure one has in, in a cargo meal lattice. These would be real nice uh, hexagons, which are not so because they are they are they are some 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 distortion torsion here along these lines here. Um, Actually, uh, when I was in Rome a few years ago, 
I found uh, actually a nice example of a Kagumi lattice, uh, not in a basket, but on the floor of an old church in Rome. <clears throat> so this is the picture of um, the, the, uh, the, the stru magnetic structure. These are the cerium atoms. Here, the, these, are the, these are the AB planes, these are the Kagumi planes. And <clears throat> then one has a, um, one has a, um, <clears throat> a magnetic ordering wave vector that varies along the C direction, uh, not not exactly like one third, but uh, with this some incommensuration. <clears throat> and when one then actually replaces some nickel, a palladium by nickel, then one sees that the nail temperature van vanishes, and um, here is the specific heat. This is for polyc crystals. This the specific heat um, actually measured uh, down to about uh, 80 or 60 millikelvin. And one sees the uh, magnetic ordering temperature goes down. And at this concentration of about uh, 1.44, one actually sees a straight line in this plot. That is C over T varies as logarithm of temperature. Much, much like, uh, much like actually was observed in serum uh, copper six. Now, if you're stuck, or if you, if, if you want to actually adopt the hertz millis model, then uh, it actually would, actually would, would indicate that one has a, um, a three, uh, two dimensional planes uh, that are actually important, uh, and where, where actually one has two dimensional uh, fluctuations. Uh, now this proposition has natural has of course to be invested in, in be checked by inelastic Newton scattering, which we haven't done so far. But in this scenario, uh, the frustrated moments play a, a key role and provide a rationale for two-dimensional fluctuations, because in these middles, uh, uh, these white balls here. These are the non-ordered um, uh, serum atoms, and they actually se separate the planes shown here in, in blue, and then from from the others because there 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 are the um, uh, white balls in between. So, <clears throat> of course, the frustration um, frustrated moments might also lead to additional um, to 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 additional fluctuations. Which are not contained in the in the Hertz um, Maria mo model. Now, as the final uh, point, I would like to call, talk about cerium palladium aluminum in, in a magnetic field. Um, this is shown here. This is the now um, field up to about six tesla, and again, this is without nickel. It's just with um, cerium palladium aluminum, and one sees one suppresses actually uh, the magnetic ordering. And then <clears throat> one sees actually also some, some other features coming up here. And these features become so sharp that uh, uh, they're actually partly uh, uh, due to uh, first order transitions. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> the geometric frustration uh, in this system becomes uh, app apparent because you have, if you look at this, this wing, for instance, um, you have very strong um, uh, fluctuation induced high energy or high temperature tail of the uh, specific heat towards high temperatures. And if you, if you then uh, uh, plot uh, the um, magnetization and, uh, and actually then you see that the, the, the magnetization is not maximum at near temperature, but at a, higher, at a higher temperature around this region here. And in, 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 in frustrated magnets, uh, magnetic systems, uh, the entropy accumulates well above uh, the transition temperature. And this led Kai Kubel to actually define a, a different, oops, to define a different, um, a different uh, definition for the, end, uh, for the frustration parameter, namely the uh, temperature of the maximum uh, entropy, that which would be around here, 
divided by the nail temperature, with, which is here, which would be a different dif definition than the working definition, which is just uh, plotting or, or yeah, lo looking at the wise temperature divided by the nail temperature. Skip this. And then I would like to, to actually then come to this, uh, this plot here where um, the, we have looked at the, um, uh, the uh, entropy evolution of um, uh, as a function of magnetic field and that's shown here. And actually you see what we also have seen before that the entropy accumulates, uh, of course it decreases generally, but then it accumulates uh, for, for a given temperature around the re range of the different uh, transitions. Um, that's, and this is now plotted here again. This is the uh, nail temperature. And then it gives rise to different magnetic phases, anti antiferromagnetic one, antiferromagnetic two, and antiferromagnetic three. And this is the temperature uh, where the entropy is maximum. And this actually, oops, and this actually also goes to zero here. And then if we go back to this uh, slide here, we have here uh, a high temperature and high field uh, range of uh, specific heat, which actually arises from uh, essentially the effect, condo effect in a magnetic field. And this, <clears throat> So that these these are these data points, and the the curves look much much uh, much more very similar to the curve that was published by Zhang uh, and co-workers co of the group of uh, Frank Stegler and others at the Chinese Academy of Sciences, uh, where they also have this this, this uh, similar plot of the entropy, and then they have um, actually. Uh, they define a T-star line, uh, which uh, is, is not so easy to see. Um, but anyway, so, so these are uh, essentially the same results, but differently interpreted. We actually associate this with uh, Zeeman splitting uh, of the Conlu uh, resonance. And in, in this work by Zhang et al., it is uh, um, described as being due to the Condo uh, condo destruction. As a final brief point, I would like to actually mention uh, that um, we have uh, measured cerium palladium, uh, cerium palladium aluminum, and we have compared that with with cerium rhodium tin, which has also been advocated as a quantum critical system. It has the same. Uh, same crystal structure uh, with this distorted Kagumi letters, and also this, the, <coughs> sorry, uh, the magnetic easy axis are the same, and still um, the behavior is, is quite, uh, quite different. In particular, if you look at the, at the uh, maximum en uh, uh, entropy change, uh, uh, nabla S, you see that this nabla S for the cerium um, rhodium tin case is actually um, not so far from perpendicular to the C axis. So that is when you measure when the, when you measure along the C C direction, you don't see much of a change of um, the uh, thermal expansion coefficient simply because the entropy doesn't change, and that is actually in line with uh, what what I talked about in the other system. You can only only see changes of the entropy when it really measure along directions where it changes, thermal expansion changes. So that brings me to a, the con conclusion. I have shown you that uh, the cm copper gold has a rich uh, entropy landscape around a quantum critical point, which can be mapped by thermal expansion measurements. I showed in particular that the pure shear stress uh, is important and actually um, is an indication of uh, relation to the uh, uh, anisotropic quantum critical fluctuations uh, in the system. 
when I, I showed you that the magnetic quantum critical point and a possible um, structural quantum critical point are independent of each other. And finally, I showed you some preliminary data on theorem um, terahertz spectroscopy, um, which uh, actually gives a new view on the chem corner breakdown uh, scenario in, in heavy Fermi metals. And for cerium palladium aluminum, I showed that we can actually approach quantum criticality by substitution of uh, uh, palladium by nickel. And also uh, we looked at the entropy associated with the magnetic field uh, induced phases. And with that, I would like to close. And that's uh, um, artist's view uh, due to Kai Grube of uh, the entropy landscape in some sort of fa fake fancy material. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Hilbert. We really appreciate that interesting talk. Uh, I believe this talk now should be open for questions. And if I understand correctly, if you have questions or comments, you should you should raise your hand. And I think we have at least a clap. And so maybe I should also uh, <laughs> represent the audience and thank you again. <clears throat> so is there, are there any questions? Uh, Let's see here. Maybe Maria can help me with this. If not, I have a question, I guess, Hilbert. So uh, this interesting uh, energy landscape that you have and, and the uh, idea that the uh, entropy is revealed by uniaxial stress, essentially, the question is, it seems now, as far as I understand, possible to measure directly specific heat with uniaxially applied stress. Is that something you think might be feasible to, to <coughs> confirm the ideas that you're, you're finding from thermal expansion measurements? Yeah, we, we, we did this experiment 20 years ago, um, maybe even 25 years ago, um, and measured the specific heat under uniaxial, uniaxial, uniaxial stress. And we found, well, we never published that because at that time we didn't know how to measure the thermal but it fits, everything fits nicely together. I see, I see. Um, it would be nice if you would dig those data and publish it. Yeah, I mean, we have published uh, the, the, the data. Oops. So um, I apologize, I've missed it. Um, We had this uh, C, C, uh, C, C minus B um, uh, stress. And as a matter of fact, um, if you measure the specific heat along the A direction, that is not including these, um, the, uh, the um, nail temperature goes up instead uh -huh. of going down. I mean, altogether it goes down, but for this particular uh, direction, it goes, uh, it goes up. We have not, I, I, I should actually do that and, and then just calculate whether it, it's, uh, it, uh, whether it converts uh, qu quantitatively, but at least the idea is that uh, it fits together. Great, okay, thank you very much. So, Joe, I have a question. I have two questions, but. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, in, I missed something perhaps in cerium palladium aluminum, <clears throat> you talk about a TS as uh, the temperature of highest entropy. Uh, I think the entropy increases always. Is this the temperature of highest derivative of the entropy with respect to the temperature or, or the gradient in some direction? I missed uh, that part. And the second question is, uh, I guess that uh, since the entropy is very rich near the quantum critical point, maybe the, that uh, some of the system is useful for application, refrigeration or heat conduction. Uh, is there any application? That not, not, not that I know of. I, I mean, there's, there's a lot of uh, 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 discussion of magnetic cooling, but this is typically, typically more for higher temperatures. I mean, the, um, 
the cooling mm -hmm. power in, in, in at these low temperatures because these heat capacity and everything is so so weak uh, is is actually not so strong. Uh, so concerning concerning your 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 uh, first question, uh, that was yeah. Mm -hmm. Could you please repeat it? Uh, <clears throat> yes, in in cerium palladium aluminum. Uh, maybe maybe under, I understood it uh, badly, but uh, you said that TS or was the temperature of highest entropy, but but I, I think the entropy is monotonic, so uh, maybe it is some derivative or no the highest entropy with respect to 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 field. I see. Ah, so the, okay. It has a maximum at a certain temperature as a function of field. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I see there's a question from uh, Macari Kanakar. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, the question is the following. You have a triclinic distortion. Don't you see effect of domains in your measurements? So in principle, because... Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Of course, uh, yeah. I, I think you, that's that's a point point that is well taken. Um, <clears throat> uh, we have not a, we have not actually looked at uh, at uh, this domain pattern and so forth in in in, uh, in detail. But you're right; uh, one would actually see uh, one would actually see domains or should see domains. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and the second question: How is this anisotropy is reflected in, say, resistivity, anisotropic resistivity? Um, <clears throat> The resistivity as such is actually also anisotropic, but um, it is not that an anisotropic as, for instance, in the, in the, 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 magne in the, the magnetic material. For instance, in the, in the three different directions that we measure, the main uh, orthorhombic directions, uh, the um, resistivity changes by 50% uh, typically for the, all the different directions. While the magnetic anisotropy changed by a factor of ten, from from the hardest to the to the weakest uh, magnetic direction. So uh, there, there's actually uh, uh, one has to be very careful uh, to to actually distinguish which type of anisotropy one is talking about. Uh, so in 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 our case, uh, we have based, mainly talked about the. Um, Entropy, uh, entropy, or the um, stress uh, anisotropy of the system. The system responds differently um, to to stress along different directions. But that is something very different from the resistivity anisotropy, for instance. Thank you very much. I, I see we have a few more hands raised, so maybe uh, Pradeep. I have, yeah, Sampath here. I have a question here. It is written down here. Uh, some of the frustrated heavy rarit compounds are known to exhibit magnetic skirmion anomalies also before long range order. Is there an attempt to view cerium palladium aluminum from this angle? Uh, did you mean magnetic skirmions? Yes. Mm -hmm. We haven't we haven't looked at that. We haven't looked at that. I, I'm, I'm, I can't I can't answer that question. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Pradeep, did you have a question or comment? You're, you're muted, Pradeep. There. How about now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So, uh, thank you. The question is a, a, a very pedestrian one. When you report specific heat, is that at constant pressure or constant volume? Mm -hmm. I, 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 I mean, as you, as you, as you know, I mean, uh, yeah. this is generally not a relevant issue if there is no thermal expansion. Mm -hmm. uh, but if there is thermal mm -hmm. expansion, then there is a difference. And theorists work at constant mm -hmm. volume, and experimentalists always work at constant pressure. So there is a difference here, which I'm uh, wondering whether it is relevant. I have to look at the numbers. Um, in general, 
in, in, in solids as opposed, uh, as opposed to, of course, uh, gases and so forth, it's the, the difference is very small. But it can be strong in, in uh, stronger, it could, it could be strong in, in principle in heavy fermions. So oh, I would it's, actually it's, have to go it's back. It's a trend and, that, <laughs> and that bothers me because there is temperature dependent mm -hmm. thermal expansion, which is anomalous at, near the critical point. And so the constant pressure and constant volume specific heats are different. That's sure, but, sure. Mm -hmm. that, just a throw. Oh, good Thank point. Oh, good point. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I th believe uh, Serini has a question, Julian. Yes. Uh, I th thank you, uh, Sandra, for this always illustrative uh, talks. Uh, my question is also simple as how uh, related to the previous one, because when you define the, you use the Lysen parameter as a ratio between the thermal expansion and specific heat. And uh, one, there, this implies that the uh, bulk modulus or expansion uh, coefficient is uh, constant. But then in the analysis, you introduce the shared stress. So somehow, uh, why is not uh, this uh, compressibility taken into account in the description? And uh, the second part of this question is, uh, does it mean that the, uh, uh, approaching the quantum critical point, the system becomes softer in some direction, for example? And then the consequence is, does uh, quantum fluctuations have some role in this uh, type of behavior? Okay, that's, that's a neat question. I mean, I would be happy if uh, someone would be able to actually try to calculate uh, the, the pattern of motion of these planes uh, um, and relate that to the actually measured uh, fluctuations. Uh, that's, that's an important point uh, you mentioned, but we, I, I'm sorry, I, don't, I, don't, I just don't have an answer to that uh, um, question, but I will, I will look at that uh, and certainly will, um, will, can give you uh, information about uh, how relevant these effects are. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe a question from uh, Musio Conantino. Hi, hello, Gilbert. Hello. Hi, Musio. Joe. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you too. Uh, I wonder if this uh, structural transition in cerium copper six, if it is second order all the way down to t equals zero. And if you have studied some uh, effect of the structural quantum criticality in these materials. Does Jim, let's go back to the slide. That's actually how we actually determine um, the, the structural transition. You can see uh, there's, there's, there's some, some rounding here, for instance, but that actually could also be uh, due to uh, concentration fluctuations. Uh, it's it's not so. Otherwise, it's these are very nice nice curves, and you you can see that the anomaly becomes as one comes to the uh, possible quantum critical point uh, associated with the structural uh, distortion. One sees the, the anomaly becomes so weak uh, there's no chance to see that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments for Hilbert? If not, maybe, can I, I maybe have a quick question? It was at the very end of your talk. You were mentioning cerium uh, rhodium tin. Mm -hmm. So I, I did not quite get what you said. So you you don't mm -hmm. expect any frustration in serum, serum rhodium tin, is this right? No, 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 that's, no, that's what I'm not, I did not, didn't, the didn't want not to say. Oh, let me go back to the slide. Yes, what please. I wanted to say was the following. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if, if, if you look at the, um, it was just, just uh, sort of, uh, the, the, uh, Gegenwart and company, they measured, uh, the thermal expansion along the A axis and C axis. And yes. if they measure along the C axis, that is in that direction, 
you see the the entropy uh, that is in the in the in the uh, vertical vertical direction the entropy change doesn't change a lot so that's why they saw something like like um uh, like like a fermi liquid and they they make a big big deal out of that and say this this is not understand it's simply due to the fact that the the therm that the um response of the entropy to the stress is anisotropic and mm -hmm. and so if if you look at their data it's published in 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 science uh, yeah, what's the name science uh, nature or no no science uh, Science abstract or something like that paper of uh, 19, uh, 2015 or, or 16. Um, they, they see a very nice increase of the um, thermal expansion coefficient in, in, in the C direct, in the, in the A direction, but they, they see essentially a flat curve in the, in the um, temperature independent curve in, uh, when measured in the, in the I'm sorry, in the in the in yeah, the, in the C CA, direction. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I look at just because the, the, the doesn't change, so yeah. Okay. Yeah, I look it up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Lucio, do you have another question or is your hand still just raised from your previous question? <laughs> I assume the answer is no. So maybe we've run a little long, so maybe I should return that now to, uh, to Pasquale for any comments. And thank you again, Gilbert. Thank you.